Yo, what's up, Peter? This is going to be a demo video for you for your Raxus SK. Uh, thank you very much for your support on this run, all your guys' support on this run. Um, I have now installed this, I, I don't know the exact number, but I do know it's in the mid 80s that I've done of these guys, whether it was the Taco chassis, the Goth chassis, my Eco chassis, um, in the mid 80s that I've done. And this was uh, my first attempt at designing a Sabre. Um, it was a design that I've always loved that got me into the hobby, the Star Killer, and it was very well received by most everybody. And it's just been a pleasure to do these whenever they come across my desk. So I do appreciate you picking one of these up and then having me go to town because you had me do just about everything one could do to this saber. All right, not going to break it down too much because I do go into talking about it later on over my desk. Um, I did. While I didn't change the overall setup of how I do your demo, I did change its location. It was on, it was at my desk, um, like up until today, and then I moved it somewhere else in my office to do it. So I picked the one guy who talked a bunch of crap about my lighting videos or the, or the lighting in my early videos to change the lighting on, and it's not the best. So I hope you enjoy. Let's go take a look at your saber. Hey, what's up, Peter? So here it is. Uh, this is the Raxus that we're gonna go over. This is from the Batch 2. So uh, designed by myself originally and ran by Sean. Um, Sean ran the Batch 2 also, but then uh, Randy over at Corbanth got in on that second run and purchased uh, quite a few actually, and this was one of the ones that he purchased. So this came from Randy over at Corbanth. Um, you sent it to me clean and asked me to do some weathering. So we got some weathering here. Um, we can go over all of that before we open it up. All right, did all the weathering on the aluminum. Um, your panels here, you've got four of them. They're made out of steel, so they were heat stained. Your bars here and here, as well as the upper piece of the crystal here and the bottom crystal holder. Those are all titanium, so those were heat stained as well. Um, you do have the goth crystal chamber add-on that's in brass here and that's been weathered as well. All right, you'll see that a lot better in person. I have some bright light here to show off the saber. Um, as you mentioned to me, some of my early videos were the darkest you've ever seen on YouTube and now they're gonna be the brightest. So I'm still figuring out my lighting. Um, I moved this mat over today to a different area that was easier for me to stand and go over things. So I will work on that, but you can see the saber. All right, uh, you asked for some battle damage. So I did do a little bit of battle damage here along the emitter, um, here along the ears as well. All right, so you can see that going on here. And I carry that over just a little bit into the control box where I felt some battle damage would have um, extended along here, but not past this point, because this would be you know, where your hand was at. If you got any battle damage past there, you'd be losing a finger. So that's that's kind of where I kept it up here. All right, uh, these are copper screws. I did heat stain those as well. All right, this emitter ring right here is steel. So we've got the heat stain treatment. Um, and that's about it for the outside of it. All right, so you run in a Carl Chen V4 nail pixel adapter in there and we'll light that up here in a second. And to get to your chassis, you just want to unscrew your handle here. You have the Goth Master chassis. This is what that looks like. Now, um, you do have a mix of brass and rhodium parts. The thing with rhodium, it starts off very shiny and silver, and then when you start to weather it and break down the shininess, um, it weathers very similar to brass. So when you get this in hand, you'll notice that the patina on the rhodium parts is a little different from the brass, and it may not show up as well on camera. All right, so for instance, this piece right here is rhodium, all right? This piece is brass, this piece is, this piece is brass. Flipping it over here, your kill switch cover or piece right here, that is rhodium, as well as your spinning crystal piece on top of your crystal there, that's, that's rhodium as well. Now for the inner piece, I did leave some of the inside arms silver, if you can see that. Um, I wanted that little bit of contrast when we started to spin that thing. I just thought it looked cool, all right? You've got this little piece made out of brass, or I'm sorry, this is rhodium as well. This piece here that slides up and down, all right? 
Uh, if you slide it up, it's held with two magnets. If you slide it down, it's held with another two magnets down here. So it's just a matter of preference where you want that. Uh, Rick put that on there for something to play with, which I thought was really cool. All right, you do have a removable battery set up. Um, there, are, there is a seven pic or five pixel accent, sorry, six pixel accent strip on top of the board. There's some diffusion underneath this as well. All right. It, if you ever want to get to your board, you're going to have to come over here and grab this and pull it off. Be careful. It's tight, but it does come off. Uh, it's got four magnets here and four magnets on the other side that correspond with these two guys and these two guys, and that's how that stays on. Though truthfully, this is a pretty tight press fit. That does help it stay on, all right? Um, that's how you get to your board, access to your SD card and your micro USB. You're running the Smuggler's Outpost Elite here that we spoke about. But if you don't need to get to your board, you can slide this on. When you slide it on, that is not on all the way, all right? You need to make sure that you push this down all the way. Just like that. So when you see that there, that's pushed in all the way. All right, it should, it should look exactly like that. But what I forgot to do before we put it on is put a battery in. You do have to take this off every time you want to put a battery in or out. Your leaf spring is down in there for the negative side of your battery. So we'll put a battery in, clamp it down in there. Now we'll come back here and put this back on. All right, push that all the way on. Now we'll come over here and we can flip the kill switch from here. You have the ignition sound phone on this guy, but with no uh, no tracks, and I took the the font wave off here that said ignition because I uh, I know that you don't like any tracks or voices on your sabers. You like to have them maintain just the most realistic look. All right, so you can see your crystals are doing a little something different each. Power is up here. This takes a little bit because it has a staggered ignition. And then this starts spinning. And you have twist off. So that's what that looks like outside of the saber. This guy gets loud though when you put this handle on. All right. You slide this all the way on. When you get to this point and you feel it's getting tight, this bar needs to be perfectly aligned with this greebly up here. So it makes that cross configure whoops sorry so it makes that cross configuration so that when you slide this window down to see your crystal chamber everything is aligned properly all right so again when we hit power now it's a beast for sound and then you can turn it off from here Flip the kill switch on and off from right here. You never have to take this off. Now I am sliding this up and down for now. Um, you can either do that or you can come over here and you can pop it right off, either way, all right? So when you're done, just put that back like this. We're gonna put a blade in it. Typically what you'd wanna do for blade retention, your blade retention is built in. It's that little grub screw right here. I have found on this one that this little guy right here is just long enough to use as a blade retention which is what I had originally wanted for this saber, or at least it holds a blade well enough to do a demo. All right, so I'm gonna put the blade in, lock it down. We're gonna come over here and hit power. Whoop, gotta turn on the saber first, duh. All right, slide this down, flip our kill switch. Slide that uh, window back up, hit power. Now we're going all the way. So it's got that glitchy ignition just so it looks kind of beat up. Blade lock up.
get a little bit of shine through right there and you can see your motor still going even if you don't have the door open so that's pretty cool slide this all the way down and turn it off from here kills power just like it should all right and we'll slide this back up put that in place once you get that in place it holds on there pretty tough uh, we'll take the blade out of here now you don't even have to take the battery out all right because um, you flip the kill switch so you can leave the battery in there until you need to charge it I've already shown you how to take it out I'm gonna leave this in here for you um, but that is basically your Raxus Star Killer with Gothmaster chassis. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, and I will hang on to this until I do some work on your Graflex and then send them both out together. All right, thanks, man.